This time, the archaeologists have outdone themselves. They found what had previously seemed like something fantastic, a unique sarcophagus that changes the idea of burials in Egypt, the oldest shipyard and the remains of an unknown tiny race of people. Watch this video and more. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. The Oldest Shipyard Underwater archaeologists from the Maritime Archaeology Trust never cease to delight us with new finds. This time they managed to find what is probably the oldest shipyard in the world. According to preliminary estimates, it is 8,000 years old. Off the coast of the Isle of Wight, deep underwater, archaeologists have found a man-made wooden shipyard that was built by Stone Age people. The shipyard did not build yachts or aircraft carriers. Stone Age people built fishing boats on it. Previously, the age of the oldest shipyard was 5,500 hundred years old, and this shipyard used technologies from the future, so to speak. This confirms the fact that either people in antiquity had much more knowledge than we think, or modern dating methods do not work at all. The oldest shipyard used advanced wood processing technology, therefore, this object is very important for maritime archaeology and understanding the development of our civilization. The shipyard was discovered at a depth of 11 meters, and 8,000 years ago, there was was dry land and the area was covered with vegetation. In fact, the shipyard was discovered back in 2005, but only now has technology made it possible to create a three-dimensional model of the structure for further study. It's hard to imagine, but it's a fact. People in the Stone Age boats using their own shipyard for this. This is what kind of technology and knowledge people had in antiquity. I am sure that before it would be very difficult for them to move from the Isle of Wight to the island of Taiwan. And we can can do it in a matter of seconds. Ancient Tiny People in Taiwan Taiwan is a very interesting island located 130-220 kilometers east of China. The history of Taiwan's indigenous Austronesians goes back 5,000 years, but according to the legends and stories of local residents in the villages, before the Austronesians, another equally interesting civilization lived here. They were often referred to as pygmies, or tiny people. They had dark skin and curly hair, and their most distinguishing feature was, as you might have guessed, their tiny stature. All information about them was based only on fables and legends. Legends. But recently, a very important event happened. In early October of this year, scientists proved the existence of tiny humans in Taiwan. The journal World Archaeology published an article claiming that archaeologists in a cave in southeastern Taiwan have found the remains of ancient people who belonged to Negritos. This ethnic group still lives in the Philippines, the Malay Peninsula and the Andaman Islands. The term Nagritos is a direct Spanish translation meaning Little Black and is the widely accepted scientific and historical name for this ethnic group. The Nagritos are the first descendants of the first people of Sunderland. For scientists, the study of these remains is very important, since these people most likely migrated from Africa. After conducting research, scientists determined that the possible height of tiny people was 138 centimeters. The first people arrived on the island 30,000 years ago, when there was a land corridor between mainland China and Taiwan. But 10,000 years ago, the corridor went underwater. The legend of the Nagritos people in Taiwan is quite interesting. Of the ethnic groups, about half of the Austronesians saw the Nagritos as enemies, while the other half saw them as allies, neutrals or ancestors. However, one ethnic group, the Saiyid, had a surprisingly difficult relationship Relationship with the Nagritos. The Saiyid is a small population that still exists in Taiwan. They have a tradition called Pa Tai, a ritual dedicated to honoring short people. As the legend says, ancient Saiyids and little Tai once lived nearby. The Tai taught their neighbors medicine, singing, dancing, and other cultural traditions. However, the Tai men harassed the Saiyid women. After that, the Saiyids became angry and killed almost all the Tai people. After this event, a terrible famine evaded them and they thought that they were punished by the vengeful spirit of the pygmies. Since then, they began to conduct 
at the Paatai ceremony in which they ask for forgiveness for the sins of their ancestors. Since then, the tiny people ceased to exist. And long before the existence of the human race, our planet was inhabited by giant monsters, and a little boy found a tooth of one such giant on the shore. A unique find of a young paleontologist. Just like that, you can come with your family to South Carolina, go to the beach and find something very ancient that makes you shudder. A little boy of 8 years old walking on the beach and digging in the mud found a large fossilized tooth of an ancient shark. Shark tooth is more than 12 centimeters long, which is considered a very large specimen. It's even hard to imagine what this monster looked like 20 million years ago, having more than one such tooth in its mouth and not even 100. An adult individual of the monster had about 300 teeth in its mouth, and each is about 8-15 centimeters in size. And now, in our time, a little boy just holds this tooth in his hands. It causes shock and admiration at the same time. Paleontologists from all over the world have already written their congratulations to the boy, because even for specialists, a find of this kind is a rare occurrence. Otidus angus titans is a species of megatooth shark that lived during the Oligocene and Miocene epochs approximately 32 to 22 million years ago. Sharks have been known to grow to at least 10 meters in length. These sharks are related to the Otodus megalodon, another extinct giant tooth shark. That is, you understand that there were many such sharks in ancient times, and what prevents them now from swimming deep in the ocean farther from a reasonable person? There is already a lot of information about megalodons on YouTube, but I still remind you that the length of this shark reached 20 meters, and the size of the largest living whale is 33 meters. However, whales are not predators, and this creature did not mind eating any living organism on our planet. Let's take a break from teeth for a bit and move to Mexico. 2. 2,500-year-old Olmec Reliefs the Olmecs are the oldest civilization in Mesoamerica. To be precise, this is the oldest civilization that we know about, and to be even more precise, we know very little about them. The heyday of their civilization was from about 1600 to 400 BC. They lived along the Gulf of Mexico, where the state of Tabasco and Veracruz are now located. Archaeologists themselves do not even know how these people called themselves, though the word Olmec is a Nahuatl word. Aztec language and means rubber people. These people had ritual bloodletting, they loved to play with a bowl and drink chocolate, and also they were the ancestors of the Maya, also about, about which the scientific world knows much more. And the Olmecs carved giant stone hats from volcanic rocks, this became their hallmark. Old buildings discovered by archaeologists were deliberately destroyed, that is, more than 2000 years ago, someone deliberately tried to wipe out a whole people with all the buildings buildings from the face of the earth. Recently, archaeologists have discovered Olmec reliefs that were made of limestone. They were about 1.5 meters in diameter and weighed 700 kilograms. Stone reliefs have been found in the municipality of Tennessee in Tabasco in southeastern Mexico. It is assumed that the local Olmec rulers are depicted on the reliefs during the performance of ritual ceremonies. Perhaps these people are in a position that reduces the flow of blood and oxygen to the brain, which causes a trance-like state. From the stone heads of the rulers of Mesoamerica, we will move to Africa, where a pink stone sarcophagus awaits us. Pink Treasure Keeper Sarcophagus Dream find. That's what archaeologists called the sarcophagus, which they managed to find near Cairo. As you know, very important people of ancient Egypt were kept in sarcophaguses. It seems to me that the ancient Egyptians buried a high ranking nobleman 3,300 years ago, clearly not so that we can now get him out of the tomb and study him with the help of modern equipment. But how else can we study the history of our ancestors if the papyruses contain far from all the information about the life of the pharaohs? Scientists 
Scientists have already found out that the pink sarcophagus belonged to Ptah M. Vaya, who served as the head of the treasury under Ramses the Great. On all sides, the sarcophagus is decorated with hieroglyphs and various titles. It lay at a depth of 10 meters for more than 3,000 years and now looks like it did on the first day. Historians have little data on who ruled Egypt after Tutankhamun. Therefore, every find is important. The pink sarcophagus indicates that the person buried in it was close to the king and played a very important role in the state administration of that time. If it's easy to explain to you in modern language, the Ptah M. Vaya in the modern world would be the Minister of Finance. To get to the tomb, archaeologists had to dig up and take out tons of sand, and this was only the first level of the tomb, located next to the Pyramid of King Unas. Under the sand, they found masonry, and in order to further dive to the second level of the tomb, the masonry had to be strengthened. Through a small hole in the floor, they descended to the second level of the tomb where the sarcophagus was located. Archaeologists descended in a metal basket, lowering and raising themselves on their own. It would seem that with such technologies in the 21st century, excavations have to be carried out in the same way as 200 years ago. The condition of the sarcophagus was good, but the broken cover indicated the presence of marauders here. Usually different people were reburied in sarcophaguses, but in our case, the sarcophagus belonged to its first owner. This is confirmed by the hieroglyphs and titles found in the sarcophagus. Professor Al Aguiz's team will now fully examine the sarcophagus to uncover the full life story of Ptah M. Waya. And around the same time, in the Marianas, people lured octopuses. Ancient Octopus Bait 3,500 years ago in the Marianas, people loved to eat octopuses. And to catch these amazing creatures, they used small cuts and drilled pieces of curry shells. This is a type of sea snail that octopuses really like. The shells were fastened with a small stone sinker with grooves. This tradition originated here 3,500 years ago and lasted until about 1,000 AD. Similar finds have been found on other Pacific islands. This suggests that ancient people shared their knowledge of fishing and hunting among themselves, even though they were separated by hundreds and thousands of kilometers. At the moment, it is these octopus baits that are considered the most ancient on the planet. This tells us that this type of food resource was important enough for them that they invented something very special to catch octopuses. It is difficult to say what made up the bulk of their diet, but if we take another experience in archaeology, we can say that for the ancient people of the Mariana Islands, octopuses were were considered traditional food. If everything is clear with seafood, then it's completely incomprehensible what kind of strange pits were found in Peru. Thousands of strange holes in Peru on the territory of Peru, archaeologists find hundreds and even thousands of artifacts and various finds that defy explanation. I will be honest, many of these finds are fakes, and the creators of these finds simply make money on gullible people. In the Pisco Valley, archaeologists have discovered thousands of holes. The Peruvians themselves call them differently. Monte Sirp, which means snake mountain, and Sierra Veruela, which literally translates as smallpox hill, or simply a strip of holes. But the most unusual names came up on the net. They are called an incubator for alien acts. These pits are located in very inaccessible place, so there are few scientists who are able to visit here. From this, it is still impossible to explain the origin of holes. They were first seen flying by plane in the 30s of the last century. In the 50s, the first expedition of scientists set off here which managed to calculate the size and number of holes. The strip of holes stretched for one and a half kilometers, and the width of the strip was from 14 to 20 meters. But the number of holes shocked the researchers. There were more than 5,000 of them. The first idea that scientists came up with was an ancient mass grave. That is why there are more questions. Pits from half a meter to a meter deep. Nearby there are no traces of a person, artifacts of ancient civilizations, nothing at all that could give at least some clue to explain this place. Archaeologists have different theories about the origin of the pits, but most of them are pseudoscientific. One thing is known for sure, that these pits are at least hundreds of years old and most likely they were created by people. You can write in the comments your assumptions for what they could be used in the past. The rarest mosaic in Syria 
archaeologists have managed to find an ancient mosaic that depicts the Trojan War. The find is about 1,600 years old and very well preserved. Found it in northern Syria. Nothing like it had been found before. On the mosaic, you can see the battle of ancient Greek warriors and Amazons under the walls of Troy. You can even see the names of the commanders who were armed with swords and shields. Most likely they were famous warriors of those times. The area of this work of art is 120 square meters and it adorned the floor of an ancient Roman bath. The Trojan War took place between the ancient Greeks and the inhabitants of Troy around the 12th or 13th century BC. The uniqueness of this mosaic lies in the depiction of Amazon women who fought on the side of Troy. The Amazons were, in ancient Greek and Roman mythology, the demigod Heracles killed Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons, in one of his 12 labors. The Trojan battle lasted 10 years. Looking back, 10 years doesn't seem like a lot of time, but if you bring that figure to our time, it sends shivers all over your body. But back to history. For nine years, the Greeks destroyed were the nearby cities and villages, but the city of Troy itself was too tough for them. This was a fortress that could not be captured, but the Greeks came up with a trick that everyone knows about in our time. The most interesting thing is that not the slightest wooden pieces of this giant horse have been found so far. Therefore, for now, the story of the Trojan horse can be considered a legend. Representatives of the Nabu Museum hope that excavations in ancient Erastan will continue. According to them, the city is full of heritage monuments and artifacts, no serious archaeological excavations have been carried out in this place yet, so we can only guess how many more amazing finds await us in the future. And in order to be the first to know about new finds of archaeologists, I strongly recommend that you subscribe to our channel. Write kind comments under the video. Thanks for the views. Bye, everyone!